Welcome to the Nat Theo Podcast, where we explore nature, the Bible, and what both of them show us about our Creator God, who made this wild and wonderful world. I'm your host, Erin Lynham. I'm a certified master naturalist, Bible teacher, and author, and I am so excited to explore God's Word and His created world with you. Today, we are talking about some of the smallest living things alive. What is the smallest living thing that you can think of? Maybe, is it an ant or ladybugs? They're pretty small. What about a flea or a mite or those tiny black fly-like insects called gnats? Well, what if I told you that there are millions, if not billions, of types of living things that are even smaller than a flea? Today, we are exploring a fascinating world of invisible living creatures. That's right, invisible. No, not because they have some superpower or invisibility cloak, but because they are so tiny that we cannot see them with our own eyes. In fact, for a very long time, no one knew that this entire world of living, tiny, invisible creatures existed. Today, we're learning all about germs. To be specific, we'll be diving into something called bacteria. Here's our trail map. We are going to learn what is a microscope and how was it invented? How were the tiny, invisible creatures called bacteria discovered? What important jobs do bacteria have? Why did God create them? Why do bad bacteria exist that cause diseases? And finally, this is a really interesting question. What can bad bacteria teach us about God's good grace. First, I have a trivia question for you, and you might need to do a little bit of guesswork on this one. I want you to guess how many tiny invisible creatures can live on one grain of sand. Go ahead and make a guess, and we will find out at the end of today's episode. So what exactly is bacteria? Well, they are tiny living creatures that are a type of microbe. A what? What is a microbe? Let's look at the first part of that word, micro. Something that is micro is microscopic in size. This simply means that we cannot see it just with our eyes. If it's microscopic, we need a tool called a microscope. You've probably seen a microscope before, and maybe you have even used one. They are cool tools that scientists use to see tiny things up close. Have you ever used a magnifying glass? Well, a microscope is kind of like that, but much, much more powerful. Microscopes use special glass lenses a mirror, and lights to make tiny things look much larger so we can see their details. Here is a quick history on how the microscope was invented and a few key people that made it happen. In the year 1590, so 432 years ago, a father and son team, Zacharias and Hans Janssen, They were Dutch eyeglass makers making glasses, and they invented the very first very simple microscopic lens. It looked more like a spyglass than the microscopes that we know today, and it had only two lenses. Well, about 60 years later, in the 1650s, an English scientist named Robert Hooke added a third lens and a lighting system. This greatly improved the magnification or how close you can see something. You see, things could be seen 30 times larger than they actually were. Hook could study things in detail like fleas and mites. 
In the late 1600s, a Dutch naturalist by the name Antony van Leeuwenhoek made the microscope even better with smaller, more powerful lenses. Some see this scientist as the true father of microscopes. And what's very important about his microscope is that with it, he was the first person to discover bacteria the tiny living things that we are going to explore in a few minutes. Since that time, the invention of the microscope has continued to be improved upon to the point that scientists can see things even smaller than bacteria. Why is the history of the microscope so important? Well, it is only with this invention that we have discovered a massive world of living things that God created. Without the microscope, we would miss so much of the wonder. Psalm 104, 24 says, O oh Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Because God made humans intelligent or smart, and he made them curious, they invented the microscope, and now we can better understand the great variety of wonderful things that God has made. But wait, you might be saying, Bacteria is wonderful? Isn't bacteria that bad stuff that can make us sick? In a few minutes, we will learn about bad bacteria. But first, let's explore the important jobs that bacteria does. You see, it's estimated that there are between 10 million and 1 billion types of bacteria. Now that's a big number range, but it's because they are so tiny and a relatively new discovery that we have so much more to learn and discover. Out of that 10 million to 1 billion types of bacteria, we only know of less than 100 types that are harmful. So if there are 10 million types of bacteria and less than 100 of those are dangerous, that means that around 0.001% of bacteria are harmful, and the rest can be very helpful. How can bacteria be helpful? Here are some important jobs that God created bacteria to do. First, bacteria helps us digest our food or process what we eat and put into our body. In fact, good, helpful bacteria are all over our skin and inside our bodies, hard at work keeping us healthy. Bacteria also helps cycle nutrients in the soil outside. In fact, they are absolutely necessary for healthy soil, which grows healthy plants and ecosystems. Finally, bacteria is also used to make healthy foods. Let me give you a personal example of how bacteria has recently helped me. Just over 10 years ago, I began feeling very sick in my stomach. We eventually found out that what was causing this sickness in my stomach was bread. Or to be specific, it was something in the bread called gluten. Maybe you have sensitivities where you can't eat certain foods because your body doesn't exactly like them. That's what was happening. So I stopped eating bread or other things that had gluten in it and all my stomach problems went away. And so I have not eaten real bread in over 10 years, until recently. You see, recently we began making something called sourdough bread. Sourdough bread has the same things that most bread has, including flour, which contains gluten, salt, water, and oil. But sourdough bread also has something else called sourdough starter. Have you ever played with slime? Well, sourdough starter is kind of like that. 
It's kind of like a creamy white glop, but it is full of living bacteria. And that living bacteria has a very important job to do. It eats up the gluten before it goes in my body. When I make sourdough bread, the dough has to sit for a couple of days before I bake it. And this process is called fermentation. Fermentation is what happens to some food and drinks when living bacteria get involved. It means the bacteria are hard at work, breaking down things inside of the food and causing chemical processes. They change the food into something new. The bacteria in fermented foods is kind of like tiny chefs hard at work turning ingredients into something new. As the bread dough sits and ferments, the living bacteria are busy eating up almost all of the gluten. So by the time I bake, eat, and enjoy the bread, it has almost no gluten. For the first time in over 10 years, you guys, I am enjoying fresh, tasty bread right out of the oven. Some of the foods or drinks that you might enjoy that are made by bacteria include yogurt, cheese, and kombucha tea. You know what's really cool? My kids and I put some of our gloppy sourdough starter under our microscope and we could see the tiny bacteria. You can see this too if you're using the episode activity guide. You can scan the QR code to watch our video of the bacteria in our sourdough starter. And if you would like access to our full episode activity guides, including activities and more information on each lesson and additional videos and photos, you can receive those, all of our past episode guides and a new one when each podcast episode airs when you join the Nat Theo Club. I'll put that link in today's show notes, or you can learn more and join at erinlinemcom slash natheo. So we learned about some of the important jobs that God created bacteria to do. But it's also true that bacteria have a bad reputation for being, well, bad and making people sick. (coughs) Remember, there are somewhere between 10 million and 1 billion types of bacteria. And a tiny fraction, about 0.001% of those bacteria types are harmful. These are called pathogenic bacteria. Another word for pathogenic bacteria that you might be more familiar with is germs. So what are germs? Do you remember what microbes are? They are tiny living things that we can only see through a microscope. And germs are the tiny fraction of microbes that can be dangerous and make us sick. Pathogenic bacteria or germs do things like cause diseases, such as tuberculosis, which has killed many, many people. Other dangerous bacteria you might have heard of include E. coli and salmonella, which can make you very sick and cause food poisoning. So we understand that God created bacteria with many good jobs to do. But why do you think he created bad bacteria? Well, the simple answer is that he didn't. When God created everything, it was good, including bacteria. On the sixth day of creation, after God made all the living things, including bacteria, here is what we read in Genesis 1.31. God looked at everything he had made, and it was very good. Picture God standing back on that final day of creation, and taken in all that he had made. Think about the most beautiful place you have ever been in nature. It would have been kind of like that, but far better, far brighter and good smelling and perfect. And while you or I would have looked at that beautiful scene and seen everything like the trees bursting forth with flowers, birds singing merrily from branches, and all the wonderful animals around, God saw so much more. He would have looked at everything he made. 
including all the microscopic bacteria that was responsible for feeding and holding together all the bigger things that he had made. So God created everything good and perfect, including bacteria. But then God's good creation was broken by sin. This planet is cursed because sin entered the world. What is sin? Sin is anything we do, say, or think that displeases God. And just like there is bacteria inside all of us, sin is also inside all of us. We all come from the first two people that God created. Do you know their names? Their names were Adam and Eve. And because they chose to sin, we also have that sin inside our hearts. That same sin broke the world and brought a curse on all the good things that God had made. We read about that curse in Genesis 3, 17 to 18. After Adam and Eve chose to sin, God said this to Adam, I will put a curse on the ground and you will have to work very hard for food. In pain, you will eat its food all the days of your life. The ground will produce thorns and weeds for you. Now God specifically named things like thorns and weeds, but the curse broke so much more. It changed what God had made and called good, including certain types of bacteria. When sin entered, and the planet was cursed, everything began to break down and even mutated or changed into bad forms like pathogenic bacteria or germs. Let's look at an interesting example of this. Do you remember the bad bacteria that I mentioned called E. coli? E. coli is very dangerous and it can cause food poisoning. But E. coli, in the right amount, is actually good for us. All of us have a little bit of E. coli in our bodies. They are a normal part of our digestive system or the system inside of us that helps process the food that we eat. So we can see that God created E. coli with a purpose to be good and helpful. But in the wrong amounts and places, it's very harmful. So we can understand that God created bacteria to be good, but because the world is broken by sin, some bacteria turned bad and harmful. But you know what is amazing? I believe that bad bacteria shows us God's good grace. What is grace? Have you ever heard that word before? Grace is when God gives us good things that we don't deserve. His love, goodness, and salvation are all grace to us. They are his gifts that we cannot work for or earn. He gives them to us simply because he loves us. Do you remember what sin is? Those wrong things that displease God and they separate us from him? Because we all have sin inside of us, We do not deserve any good thing from God. But listener, his grace gives us everything we need. Listen to Romans 3, 23 to 24. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. And all need to be made right with God by his grace, which is a free gift. They all need to be made free from sin through Jesus Christ. So how do bad bacteria and germs show us God's good grace? Well, think about when the planet became broken by sin. Only the tiniest fraction of bacteria became harmful. If that number was even slightly higher, there would be far worse disease all across the world. If the number of bad bacteria was much higher, we probably couldn't survive here. I believe that when the earth was cursed and good bacteria turned bad, God set a limit to the bad bacteria in order to keep us safe. That is his grace. 
even way back then, God was thinking about your protection. His grace protects us. God's grace also protects us from the disease of sin. Sin is an invisible sickness that affects our hearts and our minds, and ultimately it is deadly. Remember what we read in Romans 3, 23 to 24, everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard and all need to be made right with God by his grace, which is a free gift. They need to be made free from sin through Jesus Christ. You see, sin takes us away from God, but he loves us so much. Listener, he loves you so much that he made the only way back to him. How did he do that? By sending his son, Jesus, to earth to die in our place and take our punishment from sin. That is his grace. Ephesians 2, 8 tells us, You have been saved by grace through believing. You did not save yourselves. It was a gift from God. You can accept God's grace and his gift of salvation. Romans 10, 9-10 tells us exactly how to accept God's grace. It says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. We believe with our hearts, so we are made right with God. And we declare with our mouths that we believe, and so we are saved. Listener, God loves you so much. He is always thinking of you. Psalm 139, 17 to 18 says, God, your thoughts are precious to me. They are so many. If I could count them, they would be more than all the grains of sand. God was thinking about you when he created everything, making a beautiful planet suited to keep you healthy and happy. God was also thinking about you when the planet and all his good creation was cursed by sin. He set certain limits to that curse to protect you. And finally, God was also thinking about you when he sent his son to die in your place because of his grace so you can be saved from the soul sickness of sin and be with God in eternity. Do you remember our trivia question? Today we learned all about microbes, those tiny microscopic living creatures all around and inside us. And I asked, how many microbes do you think live on a single grain of sand? An experiment and study from a team of scientists in the year 2017 discovered that there are somewhere between, are you ready? 10,000 and 100,000 living microbes on a single grain of sand. Think about that. God made a world simply full of wonderful living things, more than we can ever see or imagine. Here's a challenge for this week. It's a simple one. I want you to go outside and fill your hand with dirt or sand. Look at that dirt or sand and think about the millions and even billions of living things that you are holding. You see, one teaspoon of healthy soil can hold up to a billion microbes. Look at that handful of dirt or sand and remember Psalm 104.24. Oh Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Hey listeners, did you know I have a new book? It's called Rooted in Wonder, Nurturing Your Family's Faith Through God's Creation. I wrote it for your parent or caregiver to inspire and equip them in taking you outside and connecting with God in creation. Rooted in Wonder is full of fun activities you can do as a family to explore God's wild and wonderful world. Pick up a copy on Amazon, my website, erinlinum.com, or wherever you purchase books.